Hey, this is BB. I'm here with my dog Ruby. We're playing Dream Daddy. That, I sounded so much more melancholy than I intended. Um, it's because I'm ex so fucking exhausted. I, have, I worked a full 12 hours today, and that's a full 12 hours with no breaks at all, on my feet, talking to people, which exhausts me, doing physical things, which I cannot do, and getting yelled at a little bit by my supervisor for not knowing stuff that wasn't my fault because he was stressed out, um, which is interesting. And I feel, I feel justified in it because I had some other staff members who were there who were like, no, yeah, he's, he has no reason to yell at you that you don't, it's not your fault. So I feel better about it, but it's still like kind of scary because like it's my job and I want to do a good job and I don't want to be fired. And I know that I'm already on thin ice with him because, <laughs> um, all of the usual social capital tricks that work for people in managerial positions don't work on me as well. I just have no interest in appeasing people who are of a higher social station of me than me as a result of um, gender and um, race and class and things like that. And so I think that that's very intimidating for a lot of people, and I'm pretty sure I'm blacklisting myself in a lot of ways as a result of the way I behave, but it is what it is. Um, I'm good at my job. Um, it's not my fault that they're not giving me the information I need. And I can't believe I went into like a two minute rant about this shit. I apologize. Um, it's been a very long day. I have some ramen noodles, which Ruby is begging for. This is my supper because I'm so fucking tired. It was all I could cook, but at least it's warm. I also had some cinnamon applesauce and a string cheese. So you know where I'm at. Um, it occurred to me. No, it did not. You know why it didn't? Because I have no remembrance of anything that I was going to say at all. So let's just get into whatever. Oh, this is Brian, isn't it? Well, let's go into it with an open mind, open heart. Maybe it will be different this time. Oh, we can't sleep. I'm wide awake. I can't help but think about the last time I went fishing, hoping that there's something I can glean from it to give me an edge over Brian. <laughs> it's about nine years old. My dad woke me up one morning and told me to get dressed and meet him downstairs. It was still dark out. I had no idea what was going on, but before I knew it, we were both alone in a freezing cold lake. Hey, sweetheart. She's smelling my breath because it smells like ramen noodles and string cheese. <laughs> I just, I'm an adult. I'm 25 years old. Ruby, I can't talk when you're like sniffing my lips. Okay, that's disgusting. Um, I had to sit there for hours while it got hot and muggy, the air thick with bugs. I picked up mosquito bites while my dad sat in stony silence, fishing bowl in one hand and a beer in the other. We didn't catch anything. You caught... Um, <laughs> a bad relationship. On the long drive home, my father bought me a pack of cigarettes and didn't say anything. This is the most interesting, enlightening information about Noodle's whole backstory here. Wow. Nine years old. He bought you a pack of cigarettes. Didn't talk to you. Wow. That's interesting. That really makes you appreciate Noodle's parenting towards um, Amanda, then, if this is kind of the role model that he grew up with. I really appreciate that they give your character a backstory. I remember what I was going to say. I was going to say, I hate every time I turn on this fucking game, it's the Game Grumps logo first thing. Y'all don't see it because I don't record that part, but oh my god. Every time, it's like, here's a reminder. <laughs> Go into a shame spiral now. Okay. But wow. This is really enlightening about Noodles' backstory, and I was going to say I really appreciate that. Um, we have a the main character is not just you as a player, kind of projecting your own weirdness onto some animated characters, but like an animated character himself who has been through like whatever and has his own interests and preferences, and sometimes doesn't do the shit you want him to do, <laughs> and sometimes that he doesn't want to do. Ruby, hi, hello. Um, so that's it. Oh, I spent. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's stop spending time on this. That didn't help, and I think I have some repressed sadness about my father. I'll deal with that later. Oh, Noodles, I'm so sorry. I wonder if, if he has any other family, if he's in, if he talks to them at all. I wonder if his husband's family is ever at all in touch. I wonder how they met. I wonder if, if the story will go into that. I have a lot of wonderings. Wow! That's so pastel and beautiful! Wow, golly, that's so pretty. I love it. I'm sitting on a boat in the middle of a body of water. I can't see any land, but I know it's a lake. Well, I see land. 
The water is placid and still. I'm holding my fishing pole. Ruby, that's exactly where my arm needs to be. I don't understand why, but it feels like my life depends on catching fish right now. I cast my lure into the water and wait, and wait, and wait. <laughs> my whole being is filled with hopelessness as I watch the line disappear into the depths below. Oh no, we're getting deep on this game. Dream Daddy is digging deep. You used the wrong lure. I look up and see my father just as he looked that one cold morning, disapproving. Holy fuck, you guys. I was not expecting this sharp right turn out of fucking nowhere today. I'm panicking now. I pull the lure up and try to grab a different one, but all of the lures in my tackle box are the exact same. I look up to my father for guidance, but he's gone. Fuck. Okay. I try casting again, but can't hold my footing. The boat tips over and I fall into the water. Sinking further and further, I see the multitudes of fish that have been lying just below the surface, all swimming around me as if to taunt me. One fish swims up to me. He has Brian's eyes. What the fuck? You gotta, you gotta use a neutral buoyancy lure if you're gonna catch that trout, buddy. Oh my god. Neutral buoyancy. Help me remember. It's fishing day. That would explain the weird dream. I groggily slip on clothes and get ready. I spot Amanda's door half open and see her still curled up in a mountain of blankets. Walking over to her bed, I gave her a tiny kiss on the forehead. Fishing day, kiddo. You ready? Oh, he's so sweet. Wow. This juxtaposition of him as, like, this, like, very sweet, goofy dad who tries really, really hard and obviously, like, loves his daughter to death. And then, like, this cold, stone-cold, beer-swilling, cigarette-buying dad that he's dreaming of. No. Well, you gotta get up. I can't do this without you. <laughs> also, stop sleeping in your clothes. Amanda pulls her comforter over her head. Never. Amanda. I'll get up in a minute. Alright, Brian should be here in 20, so you better not just go back to sleep. Why would you trust her with that? Why would you believe her? Amanda sticks her hand through the blanket to wave me away. I can't, even with good intentions, I cannot get out of bed unless I'm physically on my feet when I say I will be. I leave her room and make myself some coffee and another cup with lots of cream and sugar for Amanda whenever she gets up. Amanda eventually wanders in and chugs her coffee while I do word jumbles. So we actually do like word jumbles. That was something that came up during Damien's date that I didn't know was actually a, something about our character. So that sucks. I hear the doorbell ring. That must be Brian. Ruby has placed her nose between my thumb and forefinger, which are currently resting on my mouse. So she has her nose smushed up against the click key. Uh, the click button. I'm letting you know because there may be sudden clicks and it's my dog deciding that her face is more important than the mouse. Which is true. Still rubbing our eyes, we walk outside to see Brian. He's decked out in fishing gear. Daisy's falling asleep next to him. I know. You guys are torturing your children. Ah. Early bird gets the worm, buddy. You ready to fish? I was born ready. I guess probably you were. My eyes, my eyes narrow on Brian. It's a good day to die. Oh my god. Hop on in, guys. Let's get this fishing party started. I walk over to the driver's side door and open it. Oh, it's the doggy! Brian's dog immediately hops into the driver's seat, wagging his tail furiously. Can I see your license, sir? <laughs> Maxwell, let Noodle sit. And Maxwell obediently hops into the back to cuddle with Daisy. Amanda settles in next to Maxwell and, da Maxwell and Daisy and immediately falls asleep. You ready for an adventure? I'm ready for glory. I struggle to stay awake as we drive to the outskirts of town. Country music plays quietly from the radio as I watch trees pass by. So where exactly are we headed? It's about an hour north of here, a little spot I've been trying, I've been going to since I was a kid. My dad used to make me go there all the time. Oh, he used to take me there all the time. That's a completely different connotation. I don't, kn <laughs> I don't think anybody else knows about it. I brought everything we need so that we can catch some trout, have a nice little fire, and enjoy the nature. Thank you, Brian. That's nice. My uh, fishing pole is in the shop, getting it tuned up. Do you maybe have an extra I could borrow? But of course, it's probably not as nice as it, uh, as it sounds like yours is, though. Oh, Brian. Right. <laughs> I can't tell if he's being facetious with like his being overly nice, or if he's just genuinely super nice and like... <laughs> Just kind of like, not even trying to be competitive, but Noodles reads him as competitive. I'm adjusting. I'm adjusting. Why do I need my laptop all the way over here? Oh, it's so I can read. 
Ruby, don't eat my ramen noodles. They're for me. I earned them. Okay. I'm digging a hole here. You absolutely are. I stare out at the forest lining the highway. Um, the sun is just barely over the horizon, scattering dusky pink light through the trees. For a split second, I spot a deer grazing on the side of the road before it leaps back into the brush. How beautiful. <laughs> Although, I'm worried about Rachel Amber. <laughs> um, it's good to be playing this game after I had such a rough day. I know my voice isn't as um, animated as usual, but I'm. this is... Um, it's so weird. I've really enjoyed this game so much that, like, I look forward to playing it. It's a nice kind of wind down for my day. It's been a rough couple of weeks at work. I'm hoping things pick up because, God almighty. After a nice quiet drive, Brian eventually tells me to pull off the highway and onto a dirt road. The car bumps along until we reach a clearing that opens up to a magnificent lake. Well, here we are. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, I like that a lot. That's so gorgeous. Wow. Lakes are so pretty, but I'm scared of them because the water is a, is kind of stagnant. And I'm obsessed with, like, the dead bodies of people and animals in the bottom of the water just, like, rotting. I know it's super weird, but <laughs> it's true. I step out of the car and help Brian unload our gear as Maxwell runs around us barking. The kids wake up and wander to the shore where Daisy tries to teach Amanda how to skip rocks. That's so interesting that Amanda wouldn't know how to do that, because it seems like that's something that she'd be into. Brian and I carry the tackle boxes and cooler down to the edge of the lake where he has a canoe waiting. Ah, oh, great. It's still in one piece. Hold on. Help me out with Maxwell. Help Brian place a tiny dog-sized dog life vest onto Maxwell. That's precious. Maxwell's barking. All right, your turn. You're going <laughs> to put a tiny dog-sized life vest on me? Brian hands me a lime green life vest. Um... <laughs> Why are you like this? He's the only one. No, I guess I, I take that back. Um, you could be really flirtatious with Hugo also. But this is like the, one of the most upfront pickup lines we've seen. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, why don't we want to wear the life vest? Um, I think um, one time I went whitewater rafting with my... Um, middle school we went on like a whitewater rafting trip it was just the baby rapids um and uh I, I was terrible at it um but I had a lot of fun but the thing was I was always kind of a chubby kid and I didn't I didn't have I never have had any upper body strength at all so um I jumped uh, out of the raft during like the slow river part and was swimming and I had a life vest and um I was fine. I could swim great. Like, I was happy to swim the whole river length, basically. But then, um, trying to get back into the boat, I was too fat and waterlogged. And they tried to haul me up on my life vest, and I slipped straight out of it. It was the most embarrassing shit. That was in middle school. So, of course, it was the worst. Um, but life vests are important. Safety first, noodles. This is frustrating, because you don't have the option to just wear it. Um, that's so flirtatious. That's really rude. I guess that's the more middle of the road option. No thanks. Oh, he's cool with it. Okay. Well, what is? Why did he offer it if he didn't want us to wear it? I'll be all right. I have no plans of being in the water. Also, I am strong and capable. Yes, noodles. Suit yourself. Brian turns to Amanda and Daisy, who are still skipping rocks. You kids want to fish? I'm good with just throwing rocks into the water. Amanda hurls a rock into the pond with gusto. Yeah, take that water. Amanda, you're supposed to be skipping them. <laughs> is that what we're doing? Daisy, don't you want to fish? I think catching fish is kind of inhumane. Yeah, Daisy. Yeah, Daisy. We had this discussion in a couple episodes back. Absolutely. We're going to go explore the woods and look at bugs and stuff. See, that sounds much better than fishing. All right, be safe. Don't go too far. <laughs> Brian puts the life vest around himself. See, he's wearing the life vest noodles. He's smart. We're probably going to drown. We're probably going to die. This is probably a second date with Brian is like the secret ending of Dream Daddy and this is how you die. Brian puts the life vest around himself and we all throw our equipment into the canoe. Maxwell happily jumps in and takes his place looking over the front of the boat. I get into the canoe as Brian shoves off. We paddle, to in, uh, we paddle together to get ourselves in the middle of the lake. We'll find out what's out there. In the next episode, it's probably Nessie. Nice. Thanks for watching. Bye.